Hey, Shalom, Shalom. First off, I'd like to say, call halal, Yahweh Bahashim, Yahweh Shah Bahashim Rakakwadash. I'd like to give double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone who taught me. Also, I'd like to say peace, blessings, and salutations to the hopeful elect, the Akim that's pushing his word in all sincerity and faith throughout the four corners of the earth. For the few sincere sisters who watch and rock with us and believe, Shalom to you as well. Shalom to all of the new viewership, the new believers, the new fruit coming into the faith. Uh, just back in the spirit of another lesson. And I may end up titling this lesson something to the effect of when will this clown show in, man? Because it's just a, a, a pretty much a circus here in Babylon the Great, which we know that the virgin daughter of Babylon, according to prophecy, is America. It fits all of the prophecies uh, pertaining to Babylon the Great. And then we always break down the word Babylon. It means land of confusion. It's just complete confusion. And you always have to point back to the rulership that's in power at this appointed time. The Most High had appointed the base man to rule like it tells you in Daniel, the fourth chapter. I'm loosely paraphrasing that scripture. But all of the stuff that you're seeing right now, at first there was Ye that uh, pretty much was uh, on the counseling block first. Now it seems like they stirring up narratives and they're going through the process of, of trying to counsel this guy, Kyrie Irving, you know, for taking a stance. And they're basically trying to uh, buck break him. You know, that's the slave terminology when they would try to uh, uh, buck break the, 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 the rebellious slaves who would try to run away and stuff. They're trying to buck break Kyrie Irving publicly in front of everybody and humiliate him into apologizing just so he can play again. They've already gave him a suspension and it's just ridiculous hearing all the commentary and it's just it's just so much just going on in the earth, which really a lot of this stuff I was I was thinking about. It could just be a distraction. There's a term that goes back to the Roman Empire called bread and circuses, which is basically uh, distractions to take people's minds off the serious matters at hand, like the the whole uh, trucking crisis. And the, the cost of diesel and just the ever increasing inflation, just everybody's quality of life is diminishing. So a lot of these bread and circuses they put out to the people. And this is uh, uh, the, the, the second leg of the Roman Empire, America. You know, we go into how you have a Senate, just like uh, the, the ancient Roman Empire. You got a lot of Roman architecture, Roman numerals, the Latin terms and the medical field, the law field. You know, so on and so forth. But everything that's going on, man, it, it just makes a wise man mad. The scripture says oppression maketh the wise man angry. And we still, to this day, are under the rule and thumb of our, our oppressive enemy, Esau Edom. And at the top of the food chain of Esau Edom, which we know Esau Edom are you self-proclaimed white people that are in power. But at the, at the top of the power seat is Amalek. Those people that are in the Holy Land that call themselves the Jays. And I'll just say it that way because everybody's getting childish, trying to uh, censor everybody, taking down videos whenever you, you mention this certain group of people, you know. But it just makes you wonder, when will this, this shit show, when will this clown, when will this circus show end, man? And that's what the men of the Lord, that's what our spirit is crying out for change. A changing of the guard, which we're that much more closer. So it's beautiful at the end of the day that all of these things is happening with uh, Ye West and Kyrie Irving because it's putting a, a bigger spotlight on this truth and who are the true chosen people of, of the Lord, of the Bible, the 12 tribes of the nation of Israel, man, which we know, according to biblical prophecy, the, the, the true nation of Israel, the 12 tribes, are you so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans that are here in America and scattered throughout the four corners of the earth. But before I ramble on too much, I'm going to just hit some, some precepts, Lord willing, this to edify. I'm going to start off here in Ecclesiastes 10 and 5. It says, there is an evil which I have seen under the sun as an error which proceeded from the ruler. So this kingdom is being completely ran in error. And it's all proceeding from the rulership that's in power. The rulership that's in power, Job 9 and 24, the earth is given into the hand of the wicked. Esau, Edom is in rulership. And the chief house of Edom is Amalek. 
those people who you bet not dare even make mention of, or you're going to be labeled anti-Semitic. And it's beautiful that all of these things is happening, too, because it's making people have to get diligent and studious to go look up some of this terminology and all of this jargon that they just throw out to control everybody's mindset. But this kingdom that we, we, we are currently living in is being completely ran in error. The turning of things upside down, like the scripture says, when the wicked are in authority, the people mourn, but when the righteous beareth rule, the people rejoice. I'm loosely paraphrasing Proverbs, the 29th chapter. So we're in desperate need. The earth is in desperate need of new rulership, man. Because things is just going too damn far here in America. You're supposed to have freedom of speech. Your First Amendment rights, freedom of assembly, freedom of petition, freedom of speech, so on and so forth. But we know that that's not the case. It says uh, back in Ecclesiastes chapter 10, it says in verse six, it says folly is set in great dignity and the rich sit in low place. So nothing but folly and foolishness that gets exalted in this place. The whole feminist movement has empowered women to think in their own a level equal or even better than men. But that's not the case. The, the you know, the, the late great Kevin Samuels, he always went into how men Build infrastructure. And you got some uh, uh, hardcore feminist women that are argue, well, you know, uh, women, they don't they don't put us in those jobs. But even if someone were to put you in those hardcore uh, jobs that sustain infrastructure, you wouldn't want to do it and you wouldn't be able to do it anyway, man. It's a lot of double standards, man, when it comes to that whole feminist agenda. You know, they want to have it both ways. They want to be men in certain areas where it's convenient, but like when it comes to things like, hey, let's put you, like, go ahead and join the draft. Go fight for your country. Then they want to uh, uh, go in the feminine role then. But masculine uh, energy comes out of these feminists when it's beneficial, when it's convenient, you know? But these women are able to, to move the way that they're moved because of the laws that have been set in place by the rulership that's in power, man. So it's nothing but folly that gets set in great dignity. It says in the rich sit in low place and the rich are those who are rich in faith. Those that have the, the knowledge, wisdom and understanding of the heavenly father. Yahweh Bahashim Yahweh Shah, the heavenly father in the name of his only begotten son, who the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ. The men of understanding, we sit in low place right now, man. Anybody that has a, a, a real woke thought. And I really I'm loosely losing using the word woke because I think it gets misused in this society. But those that really have true woke thoughts, they get canceled in this society. They get put to the back burner, so to speak. It says I've seen servants upon horses and princes walking as servants upon the earth. So those that were created to be servants are in the power seat because horses represent power. And it says, princes, Israel, Yasharala in the Hebrew, he is a prince of the power. We're walking a service upon the earth, man. And it, it kind of makes me mad, too, that these NBA players are not getting behind Kyrie Irving, which I understand everybody got to get their daily bread. This inflation got everybody trying to secure their coins on a higher level. But the thing that these NBA players... The, and I'm talking about the Jakes, you so-called Israel, or not you so-called Israelites, but you Israelites that are in the league. The, the league is probably 90% or more Israelites, man. If y'all will all band together and say, hey, if Kyrie Irving can't play, then none of us are going to play. Don't you think they would have to come to the table and negotiate and reconsider trying to cancel Kyrie? That's just one example, but they already know that our people collectively we're not going to stand uh, on anything in unison, cohesively together as a unit, man. That's why they're able to treat us the way that they treat us, man. Kyrie's having to walk alone, man. And I'm just using him because he's being made as the notable example of public shame right now for trying to take a stance. And they're trying to humiliate him 
by making him apologize when he kind of in, in some form recanted some of his uh, earlier thoughts. But I heard one uh, small hat say that he didn't feel that it was genuine. <laughs> so now they want to control how you give your apology, so to speak. He didn't unequivocally apologize. They're using terminology like this now, you know. So it's, it's just a sad state of affairs. And if you're in your right state of mind, this should piss you off. This should have you praying and crying for the Heavenly Father to just bring judgment to this place and set things aright. Matter of fact, I'm going to go to the next script. I'm going to go to the next script, man, because our people don't stand on nothing, man. It's really sick just seeing the commentary of some of our people like saying, Kyrie, just go ahead and apologize. And he ain't even do nothing wrong, so to speak, man. All the atrocities and the rape, robbery, murder that's been uh, committed against our people. And they want Kyrie to Irvin to, to apologize for posting something on a social media platform content that he didn't even make in the first place. That Amazon has on their uh uh they they have that that uh documentary on Amazon, man. But Amazon's not being canceled, you know. It's sad. It seems like the wicked they just continue to prevail and increase and increase, man. But for the men of the Lord, we know that they they're on a short run, man. Their expiration clock is about to hit. Like Job 14 and 5 said, the most high had appointed their bounds that they can't pass. This is Habakkuk 1 and, and 1. It says the burden which Habakkuk the prophet did see. And the prophets, we see nothing but burdensome things happening in this society. That's why we're in the spirit to sign cry for all of the abominations that be done in the midst thereof. Pursuant to... Um, Ezekiel 9 and 4. Verse 2, it says, O Lord, how long shall I cry and, and thou will not hear? Even cry out unto, unto thee of violence and thou will not save. So that's the spirit that the men of the Lord that are in our right mind feel. When will the Lord basically come to, to, to redeem us, to, to come and help us? Because us Israelites, we don't have any help. Every other nation they have someone that comes to their aid in situations. But we're the nation of people that don't have anybody that co to come to our aid. And that identifies us based on a prophecy in Deuteronomy 26, uh, 28 and 68. No man shall buy thee. But the one who was prophesied to Yahweh Shah, he is the deliverer. He is our salvation. So there's nothing but, uh, I'm going to keep reading. It says, verse 3, Why doest thou show me iniquity and cause me to behold grievance? For spoiling and violence are before me, and there are, and there are that raise of strife and contention. So there's nothing but grievance and, and spoiling and violence and strife and contention that gets perpetuated on the nation of people, on the Israelites, man. We're made the face of being anti-Semitic, anything negative, criminals, which I will have to admit and be truthful that two thirds of our people, we know that they're not right. That's why they're going to have to be judged on this side, because two thirds of our own people, they're wicked as all hell. It says, verse four, therefore, the law is slack and judgment doeth never go forth. So righteous judgment never goes forth in this place. And why? Pursuant to Psalms 15 and 16, the wicked, they cast the, 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 the laws of the most high behind them. Esau, Edom, they create their own laws. They don't follow the laws of the heavenly father. If that was the case, this society would be ran in a whole orderly uh, fashion. But righteous judgment here, it never goes forth here. It says, for the wicked doeth compass about the righteous, therefore wrong judgment proceedeth. So wicked, they seem to compass the righteous right now, man. And nothing but wrong judgment proceedeth, man. 
I don't understand why Kyrie Irving has to apologize when he didn't even do anything wrong, man. And they might clip my video just for uh, it, it may seem that I'm in agreement with his stance when that's not the case. I'm just speaking the truth of the matter, man. And it's beautiful because it, you got a lot of people that feel these sentiments, but only the men of the Lord are going to openly confess these things, man. And put our life, liberty and freedom on the line to do such, you know, just as the prophets that came before us, because it's necessary, man. We're coming into a time of attrition, man. Things is going to come to a head. The man of sin is being revealed. Satan's going to come with great wrath because he knows he has a short time, man. These devils are being exposed, man, and they're losing their mind. You even have other, you know, so-called J's that are coming out, bringing out information on how the so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans are the, the true chosen 12 tribes of the nation of Israel that the Bible speaks of. The real Israelites. And no, we're not no black Hebrew Israelites. The nation of Israel, we're, all, we're mostly all different shades of brown, from dark brown to lighter brown. So I just like to always, every chance I get, you know, knock down that, that deception. But it's like in this kingdom, whenever you speak truthfully, that's the whole uh, MO, the mode of operandi, cancel culture. And it's a sad state of affairs, man. It's literally going to take divine intervention to weigh in on these things. Wickedness hath exceedingly polluted the earth. So the Most High, he's about to act. He's about to move on this place. And he's using situationals like this to be more justified in bringing judgment to this place and exposing those devils who are just putting hell on everybody. Isaiah 59 and 14, it says, and judgment is turned away backward and justice standing afar off for truth is falling in the street and equity cannot enter. So equity cannot enter into this place. This place is built on deception and lies. That's why we call the rulership that's in power the devil. The word devil goes back to Diablos, which means deceiver. They've used deception as a major tool to just trick everybody and control the narrative. It says, yea, truth faileth, verse 15 in Isaiah 59. It says, yea, truth faileth, and he that departed from evil maketh himself a prey. So anytime you try to depart from evil, anytime you speak the truth, you make yourself a prey. You got a target on your back. Everybody's out to counsel you. Everyone wants to isolate you at that point. All of these NBA players that I know more than 90% of the NBA players that are Israelites, they know that they're Israelites. They've seen one of the Israelite camps at some at point. They know about this truth, man. And none of them are openly standing behind Kyrie. Now, they might send him a text message. You know how Jake do. Good job, Kyrie. We with you, bro. This, that, and the third. But they're not going to openly stand by him, man. And it's sad. It's sad. And I'm not trying to put Kyrie on some level like he's a prophet or that he's speaking the truth because he's made some questionable statements, you know, over the recent years talking about the earth is flat and this, that, and the third. So we, I have disagreements with some of the things he said, but... You just got to call it down the line, man. That's part of being a righteous judge, just calling things straight. And as far as what he said recently, he I don't believe he's did anything wrong, man. You got to prove it. And I think he has a case, too, if the NBA tries to just really stand on not allowing him to play until he's apologized. He can go get him a lawyer. He might get him a lawyer. That's one of the so-called J's. They're the best lawyers. Hey, the Lord is a bad dude. He could set it up like that. I mean, it, it, hey, nothing surprises me anymore in this clown show. In this bizarro world that we live in, the weirdo world. 
it says, I'll read verse 15 again. It says, Isaiah 59 and 15, yea, truth faileth, and he that departed from evil maketh himself a prey. And the Lord saw it, and it displeased him that there was no judgment. So the Most High, through his only begotten son, Yahweh Shai, they see everything that's going on in this place and that there's no righteous judgment going forth. It seems that wickedness is prevailing, and it is at this appointed time. But that change is going to come. I think Sam Cooke that sung that song. That change going to come, man. Things can't continue on like this for too much longer. But that's why it's beautiful that the men of the Lord, you know, through this grace period, we're on the front lines out there confessing the truth, man, of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah via the Holy Bible, waking our people up to their true biblical nationality and identity, man. Compelling our people to repent and qu quit committing all of these different sins that separate us from our power. You know, committing adultery, murder, selling poison to each other, eating all of these abominable foods, so on and so forth, man. But the point I want to make is just a clown show and the fact that anytime anybody stands on their square to speak truthful thoughts, they get counsel. Everybody turns their back on them. Everybody's coming against them. It's a sad, well, I ain't going to even use the word sad. It's beautiful for the men of the Lord because if you understand prophecy, if you're measuring the times diligently, we know that we're that much more closer for Yahweh shot cracking those clouds and setting things aright. We're that much more closer to the destruction of Babylon the Great, this sinful kingdom, man, that has everybody in just complete hell, especially the Lord's people, the Israelites. Because two-thirds of all people, we even hate the, 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 the state of affairs that they're in right now, man. They're in embarrassment. We don't like being tied to them, the two-thirds that is, man. Because they're completely wicked. And we don't condone wickedness, man, of any kind, even by our own wicked people. I'll get this, this last script and I'll end out the short lesson. I just want to share my thoughts. Isaiah 29 and 21, it says, uh, let me see here. So like, I'm just finding a good place to start here in Isaiah 29. Isaiah 29 and 19, it says, the meek also shall increase in their joy in the Lord. And we know that the meek shall inherit the earth. We're the meek, the Israelites, the true Israelites. We're the ones that don't have anything, the poorest nation of people on the planet, the sickest nation of people on the planet, the most ignorant, the most dysfunctional people on the planet. Without anybody that ever comes to our aid, man. We got to be the children of the nation of Israel. And the prophecy clearly identifies us. It says the meek also shall increase their joy in the Lord because we see these prophecies coming to pass. All it is really that's happening is the work of the Heavenly Father. That's why we got to give praise. Call Allah Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah. It says the meek also shall increase their joy in the Lord and the poor among men shall rejoice in the Holy One of Israel. It says for the terrible one is brought to naught and the scorner is consumed and all that watch for iniquity are cut off. So all the wicked, they're about to be cut off, man. All that do wickedly, they're about to be cut off. Starting first and foremost, public enemy number one, Esau, Edom. And at the top of the food chain, Amalek. And then, you know, going down the chain, you, you regular Edomites and then the other nations and then two thirds. And then I know two thirds mostly contain our, our wicked women because there's more women on the planet than men. All the, the, the those that commit iniquity, they're they going to be cut off, man, real soon. It says that make a man an offender for a word. So that's what, what's happening right now is with this culture, with this council culture nonsense. They make a man an offender for a word. There was always this little song 
that I uh, we used to sing when I was a, a, a child. Sticks and stones may break my bones, but words don't hurt. But words obviously do hurt. Because someone's always getting big mad by words, man. When I thought we lived in a place where you're supposed to have freedom of speech. A hypocritical nation and society that we live in, man. The Lord has to judge this place. It says, verse 21, that make a man an offender for a word and lay a snare for him that reproveth in the gate and turn aside the just for a thing of naught. And that's really pertaining to the nation of Israel, the, 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 the elect, the prophets that are out there on the highways and the byways and, you know, on the YouTube channels, putting up these shows, professing nothing but under uh, hardcore truth, just the raw truth at its purest form and reproving in the gate. Because the prophets are on the scene to correct things, man. This earth and this world as we know it, it needs major correction. It needs a complete overhaul. So those are my thoughts, man. That's my sentiments and my prayers to the Heavenly Father. When will this clown show end, man? So brothers, continue to cast up those prayers to the Heavenly Father that our prayers may pierce the clouds and just hold fast to the faithful word. Till we get delivered out of here, Lord willing, if we endure until the end. So with all being said, Lord willing, this edified, I want to give all praises to Yahweh Ba'ashim, Yahweh Shah Ba'ashim, Rukak Wadash, double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone, Shalom, peace and blessings to the elect.